Carl Palmer. When you don't know a musician and you don't know, like, the way he thinks or whatever, you can just get down to, like, the basis of it and say, shall we have a blow, have a play? Because you, ha you definitely have that in common. Whether you have it in common once you start playing, whether you actually hit off is another thing, you know. Uh, so, yeah, it was the same situation with ELP, um, where Greg would say, oh, you know, he'd want to get into, like, like the deeper like situations within the band like record contracts and all that which i'd like to hear about as well the essence of it has to be can you actually perform together mm. and of course some musicians can and some musicians can't you know you can have a band full of good musicians and they won't be a good band mm. as you must have heard that before and of course with keith knowing what he was like he came forward with like the right statement let's play and that's what i needed to hear first of all can i go back to your to your solo side um, yep. and new orleans um one of the reviewers i don't know whether you read it in in this week's sound sounds he said a uh, quote it's a workout aimed basically at the groin at the groin i was told this by peter sinfield actually uh i really don't know what to tell you about that <laughs> it, the piece of music itself i was originally going to record um with a, a group that used to play with Dr. John. They were on a Stones tour. Oh, what are they? Meters. The Meters. Um, I wrote this piece of music and I thought to myself, yeah, that, I need those type of players, you know. And I had so many hassles with them, you know, because all these things take a lot of time. Uh, I thought, well, you know, I'll record it sort of with like hand picked guys and I won't, because they've got to sound the Meters. I mean, there's no mistake about that. And you, I wanted to capture that. And uh, that's how that came about. They were most uncooperative, and so was Dr. John about the situation, because he was, like, I don't know, involved with them or something at the time. So we had to leave that. And uh, I picked people like uh, Ron Asprey, uh, Colin Hutchkin Ascent again, because of back door, you see. Yeah. Uh, the reason why I've used those guys on various tracks, um, though it's not mentioned on the album, I'll tell you about that later, is I produced an album of theirs called Activate last year also. Well, not last year. I lose track of time, right, because it does go very quickly. Mm. I think it would be about nearly 18 months ago now. Mm -hmm. uh, and Warner Brothers, and I don't think it did very well. But, you know, it also took up a certain amount of time, two mm. and a half months or something. So, that, to me, that was like, I called it, that's what, when I go down Bourbon Street, that's a sound I hear. <laughs> Welcome back, my friends, with Greg Lake. I don't think that people are waiting to see new technical gimmicks. I think they're sick of technical gimmicks, really. I mean, everybody's done everything, you know? I mean, if you could project Emerson, Lake and Palmer on the face of the moon, you know, we're not going to do that, incidentally. Um, wouldn't, wouldn't, wouldn't be a thing. I mean, everybody knows that those things are just uh, sensations, technical sensations. It's a question of money really you know i mean you could you could do an incredible laser show if you want you know um i think that that was valid at one point um not just in, in immense equipment but to raise the level of a theatrical production i think is a valid thing to raise the level of entertainment i think it's a good thing but for us now we're certainly not considering um taking a load of gadgets and tricks on the road because I mean it just doesn't mean anything really it's the music and and what power is contained in the music that that uh, that's the important thing it's going to make the show either incredible or a down or whatever it is because uh, the only way forward is music none of that other stuff cuts any ice at all not really not when you get down to it so for us it's music and and we have chosen to do it with orchestra and that's the way we've chosen to expand and move forward not necessarily because it's of greater magnitude although of course it is and presents a tremendous amount of problems to assemble we're going through well you know today you were with us tremendous agonies getting it together and uh it's a real sweat i hope we're able to do it keith emerson i think the the whole thing is growing towards maturing and settling down as uh, three musicians, um, I don't think it'll get out of hand. But it has come to a stage where you've said that uh, people expect more and more. 
and I remember, I mean, being at, uh, I think it was Wembley, was it Wembley? Mm. Yeah. And um, sort of just being there and feeling the gig, it was the first time that I'd actually seen you as Emerson, Lake and Palmer. Um, people do tend to expect the next time that you go out, oh, yeah. something bigger, All something right. better. Mm. You know, whether it be um, new laser beams or whether it be fireworks, or whether it be a, mm. a, a concert orchestra. Yeah. I mean, they do expect something different. And this sure, is and I'm going to try not to. I'm going to try not to let them down on that. I mean, that's uh, one of the reasons why we're being as bold as trying to get a a large orchestra out on the road, because. Uh, I mean, I'm not going to say that orchestras haven't been done before. I mean, people have toured with orchestras. Um, it's been going on a long time. But um, we want to use the orchestra as an addition to uh, whatever else happens to come by naturally. Carl Palmer. Since we last toured, there's been many advances made in technology, right? If this had happened to the band three years ago, it would have been practically impossible to tour with an orchestra and group. The biggest criticism you hear is the group is too loud, it outdrowns the orchestra, boom, 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 boom. Well, the thing is, we've been fortunate enough to meet up with certain people, right, who can supply what we need to create the sound we want. These very small pickups, no bigger than a postage stamp, you put them on a flute, an oboe, a clarinet, a cello, a violin, and it sounds like a violin, acoustically, but magnified to 10,000 watts. It doesn't sound like an electric violin. Mm. There is a difference. In other, in other words, it doesn't sound like a synthesized violin, mm. you know? We've experimented with this in the Montreal. We had a scratch orchestra, went through it all, and it worked. We were like surprised. It worked to the point I could actually put them on a gong, stick it on a gong, hit the gong, and it would sound like a gong, and the thing wouldn't fly off. I mean, it's remarkable. The chap comes from LA. I'd rather not mention his name or the company because we want to use it first, right? Um, it's incredibly expensive. Not this pickup, but the whole organization, incredibly expensive. You have to like think about uh, 70 musicians. By the time you've gone through lighting crew, road crew, um, personal assistants, you're into like 130, easy. You know with your truck drivers and what, you're in, like, a lot of insurance to be taken out in each, because nobody needs to like lose a finger or whatever. It's very, very difficult. The problem we have like run into, which proves to be, well, it's not unsolvable, but we need to spend more time than what we originally allocated, is it's taken three weeks. We have guys working here in Paris, in New York, Montreal, selecting musicians. Each one is interviewed. If the guy plays well, but his attitude is wrong, he won't be there. It's better to have a guy who doesn't play quite as well, but his attitude is perfect, because he will be better. Once he gets within the environment, he will be the man for us. You know, because you don't want like 70 like prima donnas all sitting together because I can't sleep with him, I want to change my room, you know what goes down. <laughs> the problem is it's taken three weeks to find 20 guys of this calibre. Mm. And we didn't think in the whole of the world, which we've got to pick from, it would be that difficult. And that is the most immediate problem for us. Mm. That's the most immediate problem which could put things back, let's say. Mm. But, you know, I mean, we, the, the amount of like money cost to do this is like un unbelievable. Yes, it must be. It is. It is. And one of the reasons why we had to move out of England was not to put money into our pockets, but to reinvest money back in the band and in an organisation like this, like an orchestra, we had to have that extra finance. And it mm. comes from us, it doesn't come from the record company. Because mm. record companies will not like say, oh yeah, it's money to tour feathers. They give you money for your album. But we spent three years not working. We spent all of that money recording. We've got a lot of material. Mm. You know, so... It has to come from us. As with this album works, mm. and with the new album, it seems to be that there's suddenly this total resurgence of Emerson, Lake and Palmer. Well, because of but the three-year absence, yeah. I mean, it's doing uh, everything. Yeah, it has to be everything. What we've tried to do, to tell you the truth, Nick, we've tried to spend the money on music more than synthesizers spinning around and blowing up. 
right? All of these effects that were created and the, the theatrical approach to the band were created through the music. If the music like warranted something going, oh, you know, and you couldn't reach it on an organ or on a on drum set or bass, then you, you know, you need that expression. Now, we're not going to drop the theatrics, obviously, there's going to be the theatrics there when it's needed, but we kind of think that the music is like, it needs longevity. Many bands sound synthesized, sound a lot like us now, you know. It's not difficult, right? Mm. I mean, they might not have the playing capa uh, you know, capacity, but they, they definitely, they definitely do sound a bit like us, you know, and we're not stupid, you know. I think technology has gone round in a circle now where it's gone eventually back to an acoustic instrument with electronic instruments and both can be presented on equal ground. And that means a lot to us because we're all classical orientated, we're all like rock orientated. This is the first time we can actually bring it together for ourselves. It's a bit of a self-indulgent thing, the ELP has always been self-indulgent. You know, we've always thought, this is what we want, you know. And we don't really think, is this going to go down? Obviously we think, is it going to go down well? But first of all, it's for us, you see. And, you know, I mean, that, that's why we left England. I mean, the band really could have afforded to stay in England, but artistically, we couldn't afford to stay in England and do this, because we needed that extra cash.